This morning's sermon is through number three in a series of six on the Lord's Prayer. Listen now for God's word to us from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9a and 11. And Jesus said, Pray then in this way, Give us this day our daily bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The CEO of Tyson Foods arranged a meeting with the Pope at the Vatican. After receiving the papal blessing, he whispered, Your Eminence, we have an offer for you. Tyson's Food is prepared to donate a million dollars to the Catholic Church if you will just change the third petition of the Lord's Prayer from give us this day our daily bread to give us this day our daily chicken. Well, as you might expect, the Pope responded, that's impossible. Those are the words of the Lord and they cannot be changed. Well, said the Tyson man, we anticipated your reluctance, and for this reason, we will increase our offer to $50 million. All we require is that you change the words of the third petition of the Lord's Prayer from give us this day our daily bread to give us this day our daily chicken. Well, once again, the Pope replied, my son, it is impossible, for the prayer is the word of the Lord, and it must not be changed. Finally, the Tyson CEO said, Your Holiness, we at Tyson Foods respect your adherence to the faith, but we do have one final offer. We will donate $1 billion to the Catholic Church if you would only change give us this day our daily bread to give us this day our daily chicken. And then he left. Well, the next day, the Pope convened the College of Cardinals and he said, I have some good news and I have some bad news for you. The good news is, is that the Catholic Church has received a gift of $1 billion. Well, the cardinals cheered and they clapped and they said, bravo, bravo. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I also have some bad news. We're losing the Wonder Bread account. Bread or chicken? What does it matter as long as God's people are fed? I suppose that it could matter to those who are vegetarian, and I certainly believe that it does matter to Jesus, because the bread that's mentioned in the Lord's Prayer carries a world of freight that harkens back to the history of the Israelites with the Lord God. When the disciples heard Jesus say, give us this day our daily bread, their hearts and their minds would have immediately been flooded with memories of what they had learned as children from the Torah and also what they had learned from Jesus Christ, the living word, as he walked and taught them and ate with them. It was the Lord who caused it to rain down manna or bread from heaven when they cried out because they were so hungry and were grumbling that they wanted to go back to Egypt. They complained and the Lord provided quail and the Lord provided manna. Now there was one stipulation, you remember it, they could only gather enough for that day. If they gathered more than that, it would spoil. So no hoarding, no storing, no putting it into the freezer, no saving a little bit so you could have some bread pudding later in the week. Why? Because God wanted us to depend on the Lord one day at a time, to trust the Lord, to provide what it is that we need. So that when we have those times of unknowing in our life, and we all have them all the time, we don't know what the future holds, we don't know what's going to happen, some of us don't even know when our, where our next meal is coming from, that we could trust in God's provision. 
and be at peace. In his book, Sleeping with Bread, Michael Lynn reminds us that during the bombing raids of World War II, thousands of children were orphaned and left homeless. Well, the fortunate ones were rescued and placed in refugee camps where they were well fed and cared for. But many of these children had lost so very much that they couldn't sleep at night. Well, their caretakers tried everything, but nothing seemed to work until someone come, came up with the idea of giving each child a little piece of bread to hold when they went to bed at night. And that way, when they woke up and they saw the bread, they would remember that they ate the day before and they would eat also tomorrow. In the same way, Jesus has given us this third petition, this beautiful petition, give us this day our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. And when we pray it each night, it's like holding that little piece of bread. When we wake up in the middle of the night, we remember and re recall all the many ways that God has cared for us when we didn't know what the future held. And we draw hope and strength for the tomorrow to, to come. We believe that God is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God's nature doesn't change. Our God is the provider. And God cares about and loves us and cares about our physical needs day by day. But was food that nourishes our body the only thing that Jesus was talking about when he taught the petition, give us this day our daily bread? Could daily bread have multiple meanings? At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, remember he was baptized and then he went out into the desert and he was there and there he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and Jesus knew what it was like to be hungry. And it was then that the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, command these stones. And just imagine the desert, all the stones, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Well, not only was Jesus hungry after not eating for so long, but surely he would have known what that would have meant to the people that he loved who were starving under the oppressive boot of Rome, if all the rocks and stones that he saw could be bread, everyone could have enough to eat. But Jesus is the one who is without sin, and he did not give in to the temptation, and he said to the devil, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God we are here being fed. We are fed in the reading of God's word, and we believe that preaching somehow becomes God's living word to each one of us and to us as a faith community, that the Holy Spirit picks up the words from the time they leave my mouth, thanks be to God, and makes meaning to them in your hearing. Many times in his life, Jesus drew away he drew away in prayer to be with the Father so that he could be nourished by the relationship that he had with the Lord God. When we receive daily bread, when we are nourished, we are nourished by God's word, and we are also nourished in times that we spend in conversation and prayer with the Lord. Remember that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Perhaps you remember that after the feeding of the 5,000 story, Jesus was exhausted. And so he went over to the other side of Galilee. He was drawing apart again. And when the disciples found him there, he told them, he said, you are not here because you have seen me perform this miracle you are here because you have eaten your fill and you want more bread. Understandably so. Think of the times that they lived in. But Jesus wanted them to know that he was so much more than just a bread king. Jesus is the one in whom ancient hungers are satisfied, which expands far beyond just the physical. 
Jesus told them and us not to work for food that perishes, but food that endures through this life and through the life to come on the other side of death. In the same way, Jesus clarifies his desire to do more than provide temporary solution for physical thirst when he says to the woman at the well, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Jesus is not only concerned about our physical hunger, Jesus wants to quench our spiritual hunger and thirst as well, which can only be satisfied by an ongoing day-to-day -day relationship with him. When I was a preteen and um, going into my early teen years, I had a pastor, Pastor Swingle, and he used to go around the church and he he would sing, not only during worship, but he would just sing. And one of the songs he sang was probably one that some of you may know, Every Day with Jesus is Sweeter Than the Day Before. Anybody remember that song? Oh, I see some nodding heads. The lyrics go, Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Physical bread alone cannot satisfy. We need a diet of physical bread and a daily diet of the bread of life. Who alone is the Wonder Bread? In our faith tradition, we believe that when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, that heaven comes down to us in the mystery that we can't fully map our, wrap our minds around, that Jesus' Spirit is present with us and in us in that meal. He joins us. He is the bread of life. Give us this day our daily bread means physical bread to nourish our bodies and also spiritual bread that Christ provides that feeds our souls. And the Lord feeds us still in yet at least one other way. Perhaps you remember when Jesus was talking to the woman from Samaria at the well. His disciples had gone into town. Remember, he was all by himself and he had that conversation. His disciples had gone into town to buy some food. And I imagine that they had eaten and they bring back the food and they say to him, Rabbi, eat something. And he said to them, I have food that you do not know about. Do you remember what he said next? He said, my food is to the, do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. He was talking about what we talked about last week in the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. Jesus was talking about establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth, and he invites us to join in that nourishing work. Because when we do the will of the Lord, we are fed and blessed abundantly. Did you notice that like the first petition it, that says, Our Father, like I was speaking with the children, this is, says, Give us this day our daily bread, not my daily bread. The hour in this prayer makes this a global prayer. So we're praying not only for ourselves, but everybody else in this church, everybody else in St. Petersburg, and so on and so on. We're praying for all the children of the world. Give us this day our daily bread. Bread is a communal product, and no bread is ever eaten alone. Even if you live alone, your bread is a communal product. It comes from oftentimes farmers in Kansas, baked perhaps sometimes in New York, and then it is delivered by trucks that bring the bread to Publix, Fresh Market, and Trader Joe's. This makes bread a corporate endeavor. None of us lives and eats alone. That implies that bread and making sure that we do what we can for our brothers and sisters who live in a world where there is enough for all, yet still go hungry that we take the responsibility to share what it is that we have. 
It's our bread, not my bread. As St. Basil the Great made clear in a sermon when he was speaking about this focus was that everything belonged to the Lord, he said, the bread that is spoiling in your house belongs to the hungry. The shoes that are mildewing under your bed, hope none of us have that problem with air conditioning, belong to those who have none. The clothes stored away in your trunk belong to the naked. The money that depreciates in your treasury belongs to the poor. We who have freely received, freely give. And it's in the giving that we are truly blessed. Anyone who has ever been on a mission trip knows what a blessing it is. So much more to give than receive. In my opinion, that's the most formational spiritual practice we can participate in. We don't have to go to Honduras to do that, but that's one way. We can step outside the door, and this church knows what it means to be generous and knows what it means to give. We give, and so do the parents at the day school who keep sending in with their children week after week the items that were in the grocery bag because they're participating to the welfare of the Lakewood children as well. And so those little children bring up cans of corn and whatever it is, peas and mashed potatoes, and for their offering, they put it in the offering baskets. Although we are expected to care about and act to improve the welfare of others, we stand together because we're not alone in what we do. There's many ways that we participate, not only with Lakewood School and Honduras Mission, but Pinellas Hope Ministry and the Free Clinic and the New Hope Christian Fellowship. This church knows what it means to give out of abundance and to give to, for those who have less. Now, with all this giving and all this need, it can get to be a pretty heavy responsibility so I don't want anybody going out of here today with a stack of responsibility over their shoulders that they can't barely bear. We remember the only miracle that was recorded in all of the Gospels was the miracle of the feeding of the multitudes. In two Gospels, it's called the feeding of the 5,000. Perhaps you remember the story Jesus had been teaching all day, and the disciples see that it's starting to get close to supper time, and they say, what are we going to do, Lord? We have to send all these people home because they're going to be hungry. It's time to eat. And he looked at them, and he said, no, no, no. You give them something to eat. Oh, we, give them, we don't have anything to give them to eat. And here comes a little boy with five loaves and two fishes. And the Bible tells us they were small fishes. And you know the rest of the story. Jesus multiplied it. Now it says there were 5,000 there, but that was 5,000 men because in that day and time they didn't count the women or the children. So just imagine how many people were there. And the Bible tells us that they all ate their fill. And there was so much left over that there were 12 baskets. Our God is a God of abundance chooses to work with us, gives us the grace of participating in building the kingdom and can take our little and make a lot. All that's demanded of us is that we are faithful and share what we can. The petition, give us this day our daily bread, tells us that God cares about us, all of us, our, our physical well-being and our spiritual well-being and our emotional well-being, everything about us and wants to fill us with good things in participating in his work on earth as it is in heaven, in helping to feed others. We, too, are blessed and filled. Thanks be to God. Amen.